So in this video, I want to talk about what the AXI protocol is. And it's actually very simple, but to start off, let's look at a very simple five port interface to an ordinary memory. So if you have a memory like an SRAM, or you've worked with memories like SRAMs, you've probably seen this. Um, you know, we have a random access memory, we can do reads and we can do writes. And to do a read, we send in a read address, we set the read address to be the address we want to read, and some fixed number of cycles later, the read data comes out. And when we want to do a write, we set the write valid bit to be one, and at the same cycle, we set the write address and write data to be the value of the address we want to write to and the data we want to set. And <coughs> then a few cycles later, the write is committed and the values in the memory reflect the values we set in this write. So if you think about how this memory interface works, it's a very simple interface and it only works for very restricted class of memories. Um, and Axi is really just a generalization of this kind of very simple uh, interface to RAMs. Um, so what kind of memories does this simple interface work for? Well, really what it works for is, well, there's a lot of limitations. The first one is that reads and writes have fixed latencies. So for example, if you look at this read address and read data, you put in the read address on some cycle and then later on the read data comes out, but there's no signals coming out of the memory to indicate when the read data is actually valid or when the read data corresponds to the data that was requested on some earlier setting of read address. And the same thing for writes, right? There's no signal that says, oh, hey, now I've finally finished doing the write that you requested and that change is reflected in the memory. Um, the user just has to know what the latency of reads and writes are and they have to be fixed. The other one is that the write address and data have to be sent at the same time. So, you know, for reads, there's only one piece of data that goes in. For writes, there's two. There's the address and the data. And we assume that when the write valid is set to one, both the write address and write data are simultaneously set to the address we want to read and the data that we want, or the address we want to write and the data that we want to write. Um, there's no way to send in the write address and then later on send the write data or send the write data first and then send the write address. The other two are that memory is always ready to do reads and writes and the user is always ready to receive data. So if you go back to this interface, um, there's no signal coming out of the memory to say, hey, I'm not ready to do a read yet, so don't put any addresses in or any addresses you do put in, I'm not gonna send responses for, right? Uh, it's just assumed that the memory can always service reads. And it's assumed that the memory can always service writes. And it's also assumed what on the memory side that for example, when the user sends in a read address and it sends out the read data, the user is always ready to read the read data. That when it sends out the read data, somebody's gonna look at it and the person who needs to get that read data is going to get it. Um, and the memory doesn't have any way to tell um, that the user is or isn't ready to receive uh, the read data that they requested. So uh, there's this assumption that both the memory and the memory user are always available to perform actions or to receive data. The other one, which is a subtle one you might not have thought about, is that reads and writes never fail. So for example, when the read data comes back out after setting read address, uh, there's no extra bits that indicate uh, whether the read actually completed successfully or not. It's just assumed that the read completed successfully. And with write, it's uh, the same situation. You do a write and you wait some fixed number of cycles and you assume that now the write uh, has taken effect. There's no signals coming out to indicate whether the write failed or not. It's just assumed that if you send in a write, um, the write is just gonna happen in a fixed amount of time and it can't fail. And the other uh, issue, which is a big one for Axie actually, is that reads and writes are issued one at a time. So in this standard interface, you know, you send in a read address, you get a read data. You send in another address, get another data. You know, same thing with writes. You send in a write address and data, it does the write, then you send in another one and so on and so on and so on. And it, so Axie is really just an interface to a memory, to a random access memory that overcomes these limitations or that generalizes this list of ports into a list of ports that uh, enable us to overcome these limitations. So in Axie, we've got a more general interface to a RAM where reads and writes can have variable latencies. The write address and the write data can be sent at different times. Reads and writes might not be issuable every cycle, so the memory is going to have signals to say whether it's ready to uh, do reads and writes. The user actually might not be ready to receive data every cycle either, so the user is going to be able to have their own ready signals that they send to the memory. Reads and writes can fail, and reads and writes are issues, issued excuse me, in streams called bursts. So rather than sending reads and writes one at a time, um, we're going to be able to request sequences of reads and writes 
um, using a sort of compressed description of common uh, sequences and memory access patterns. And really what it amounts to in the most common usages, you can basically specify ranges that you want to read and or write to, and you can then do the reads or writes in a stream. And the Axie port list, the set of ports, is a lot larger than five ports, and there's a lot of extra features and little sort of add-ons that I'm not going to discuss in detail, but basically Axie is organized around five groups of ports. So rather than showing the individual ports, I've just shown the five groups. And the five groups correspond to the five pieces of data you need to access a memory where reads and writes can fail. So four of them actually we've already seen in this interface, the read address, the read data, the write address, and the write data. So in Axie, you have a read address uh, channel, it's called. Channel just really means a group of ports. You have a read data channel, a write address channel, and a write data channel. And then you also have this fifth channel, the write response channel. And you need the write response because in Axie, reads and writes can fail. And so unlike in the uh, normal five port SRAM interface, <coughs> there has to be some data coming out on the right to say whether a write succeeded or failed. And in Axie, uh, the read data channel will carry information about the, whether a read succeeded or failed. So in subsequent videos, I'm going to go over uh, in more detail the list of ports that make up each of these channels and uh, how the Axie protocol is organized. But the main thing to know about Axie is that underneath the surface, it's really just a more sophisticated way to interact with a RAM. And it's a generalization of the kind of classic fixed latency, always available, never failing interfaces that you see um, on very simple SRAMs. And it's really just a generalization of that to uh, some more complicated situations. So in the next few videos, we'll talk about what kinds of ports are located in each of these channels um, and how you would use them to do uh, reads and writes to a memory using the Axie protocol.